Overnight, a virtual city mushrooms out of the salt. The Bonneville Nationals are the most important speed trials in the world. Southern California Timing Association already has 200 cars and bikes entered by opening day. Others are yet to come. Over 7,000 people will be on the salt during this one hell-bent for leather week. Motorcycle entries get instructions from Earl Flanders, official referee from the American Motorcycle Association. With empty tanks, have your tanks sealed and remain sealed until after the There are classes for almost every kind of car and motorcycle made, remade or homemade. They come in all sizes and shapes. Speed Week draws entries from all over the world. England, Germany, South Africa, Japan. Like Bert Monroe from New Zealand, he's a legend on the salt. It takes him three months to make the round trip, but he comes every year. He's past 70 and still rides the streamliner he made himself. Nearly all the parts machined by hand. As usual, a number of streamliners are here trying to set a new motorcycle world land speed record. Most of the streamliners have two engines. Many have been here before, but this year there's a newcomer, powered by a single Harley-Davidson Sportster engine. It was built by Dennis Manning with Bruce Miller and Craig Rivera of Brea, California. Manning, who designed it, still needs a little work before they run it. Other big guns of the meet also ride Harley-Davidson's. Leo Payne from Cedar Rapids, He's already ridden that Sportster faster than anyone has ever gone unstreamlined. Holds two records with it. This year, he hopes to be the first to go over 200 on a conventional motorcycle. Another veteran on the salt, Warner Riley of Skokie, Illinois, also holds two records. His bike, very much like Payne's, but he runs on gasoline instead of fuel, a different class. Bobby Thomas of San Antonio. If anyone has the power to go over 200 on a bare bike, he has it. A beefed up Sportster engine with supercharger and fuel injection. More brute horsepower than any other single engine motorcycle at the meet. Essentially, Thomas built a drag bike. Whether it will take all that power through the mile is probably what's on his mind right now. A beautiful run, and good for a new class record, 
172.5 average for the mile up and the mile back. He'd have gone faster except for burning out a transmission bearing just as he came through the trap on his return run. Leo Payne waits at the starting line, modified Sportster engine, puts him in the up to 3,000 cc class with fuel. A lot of waiting in line here. So many bikes and cars taking turns on the course. The Harley Davidson streamliner, finally ready for inspection, has to meet rigid safety requirements. Streamliners are unlike any other motorcycle. Their unique design and extreme speed make them completely unpredictable. Before it can run on the course, it has to make a trial run on the practice track. Still need before they can run it wide open. And there goes Leo Payne out to break 200. It's never been done except in a streamliner. He's done it one way, 206. He has to run the mile trap both ways for the record, a two-way average. Here he comes back into the wind this time. One ninety-eight point nine, and he's done it. Leo Payne has just done the impossible, a two-way average of 202.379. The word goes out quickly over the PA system, and everyone, especially the Harley-Davidson owners, stop whatever they're doing to go over and shake Leo's hand. And there it is, 202.379. No one thought it could be done, and here Leo Payne has done it. Here's Warner Riley, that Sportster engine, right out of his street bike, reboard and restroked, the best precision engine of all the Harley Davidsons here. Gasoline class, up to 3,000 cc. Trying to raise the record he set last year in this class with the same bike. And he's well on the way to it, 167, one way. All vehicles will remain in the pits. Do not use the spectator road. And look at him come back. Well over 170, a new record, his two-way average, 169.6. 
the fastest anyone has ever ridden a mile on a regular motorcycle with gasoline. This is Bob Sharpenstein, sports derangent, modified frame, in the under 1,000 cc class. And he posts a new record of 122.2. After a record run, bikes are immediately inspected to be sure they're still exactly as they were entered in their particular class. Motorcycle referee Earl Flanders and his assistants inspect Riley's bike and Bob Sharpenstein. A fairing increases speed about 15 miles an hour. Without it, Payne enters a different class. He gets a new number, and he'll be trying to better his own record in this class for bare bike, modified frame and engine, still running on fuel. Here he comes. One eighty three going up the course a little better than the record he set last year. Coming back over one ninety an average of one eighty six point seven and it's another new record for Leo Payne Warner Riley also with a fairing off. And he boosts his previous record in this class up to 156 on gasoline. Malcolm Wood, Harley Davidson Southern California District Manager, congratulating Leo Pate on his two fine performances. The boys with the Sportster Streamliner still having their troubles. Wood has been right with the Streamliner from the beginning, keeping Harley Davidson management informed on its progress. If you take a standard production Harley Davidson 74 and strip it down to its bare essentials, you get a bike like this, entered by Steve Macias and Ken Montero. Stock frame, stock engine, ordinary gasoline, and Montero raised the record in this class, already held by a Harley Davidson, to 134.2. The Harley Davidson Streamliner back in the lineup. It still has to qualify before it can run for a record, and there's only one day of Speed Week left. A lot of interest in the Sportster Streamliner in spite of the delays. A good qualifying run, strong enough to run for a record the next day. But in the process, they've damaged the engine, and a whole new crop of problems has turned up, things that only come out at full throttle. Bobby Thomas comes over to have a look. There's a great camaraderie among all the Harley-Davidson owners at the meet. Everyone would like to help. Warner Riley offers them the engine from his Sportster. They couldn't ask for a better one. But the marriage of an engine to a streamliner is highly critical. The engines are basically the same, but no two are exactly alike. The whole configuration would have to be slightly altered. The drivetrain, everything has to work together. 
Even if the engines could be switched, the new problems of handling at high speed are simply beyond them. And there's no time to experiment. Speed week is over. Altogether, Harley-Davidson bikes set new records in every class they entered, except for the Streamliner. But then no one else set a new motorcycle world land speed record either. Bob LePan still held it, the record he set in 1966, 245 miles an hour in a Streamliner, powered by two British Triumph engines. Like many other participants, Manning and his crew go home disappointed. Shortly after Speed Week ended, however, Britain's triumph finally bowed to Japan. Don Vesco of El Cajon, California, returned to the salt and drove his twin-engine Yamaha streamliner to a new land speed record of 251. Meanwhile, Manning's streamliner had showed enough promise at Speed Week that Harley-Davidson sent its racing engineer, Dick O'Brien, to see Manning and examine his bike in detail. On his return to the Harley-Davidson home office in Milwaukee, O'Brien reports to Vice President John Davidson and motorcycle sales manager Charlie Thompson. They're convinced that the Harley-Davidson racing team can get the bike, and there's a good chance they can bring the world's fastest motorcycle title back to the USA. One by one, O'Brien pulls the team together. Manning, of course, delighted to have them bring his streamliner back to the salt. Cal Rayborn, a top racing rider. George Smith, a Viola, Wisconsin, fuel and carburation expert. Warner Riley of Skokie, Illinois, a master of the powerful Sportster engine. They take a shakedown engine from the factory racing department. Riley's engine will be saved until all the other problems in the streamliner are solved. One big problem is time. At best, they have two weeks while the U.S. Auto Club is on the salt, timing the blue flame in its bid for a new automobile land speed record. Scarcely a week after the decision to go, they're back in Wendover. A local garage becomes their home for the next 10 days. When they're not on the salt, running the bike, they're here, tearing it down, putting it together, building new systems, fixing this, changing that. And once in a while, they sleep. They selected Cal Rayborn of San Diego to drive the bike, one of the world's finest racing riders. And he has an unusual talent for communicating exactly how the bike is acting after each change. That is right. That shows that he can get it to pick up more as he wants to the Finally, after nine days, working every night since they arrived, sometimes all night, they're bone weary, but they're ready. They've had the bike up to 240 with the shakedown engine. Now they put in the fresh engine from Warner Riley Sportster, the same mill that carried him to two national class records at Speed Week. All systems are go, and it's now or never. USAC timers waiting. a new record through the trap at 254. His return, even better, over 256. 
and the world's motorcycle land speed record belongs to Harley Davidson, 255.4. Joe Petrali of the USAC timing crew congratulates O'Brien and Cal Rayborn. Petrali himself rode the first Harley Davidson to a world land speed record in 1937. 